We're gonna see how well they manage Cake as we move over to the winner side qualifiers for tonight's top eight. You know, watching Cake move and how he's evolved Force Burn, because Cake Assault, for lack of a better phrase, is the Force Burn metagame. He did it at first by finding crazy punishes like that. And he still has those if you're not ready to DI perfectly like someone like Penguin is because they've played forever. But when he finds ways and when he has to and when he sees that you're ready to avoid some of his setups and some of his, uh, some of his traps and offensive pressure, that's when he becomes a stalwart man for the mix-ups. And that is all that Forest Burn loves to do, especially with that smoke cloud. A clean extension and a clean fighting out of the corner coming out from Uda, but you cannot be slipping against Cake Assault because this man defines not just Forest Burn, but oftentimes this game. It took 50 seconds for Uda to get two hits in. It took 50 seconds for Cake Assault to take two stocks. I think this goes to show this is going to be a very difficult set for Uda as Cake manages a three stock in very efficient fashion. All right. A little bias. Forceburn's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool from the Forceburn player. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Watching the Forceburn. <laughs> Look, man, I am... <laughs> Thank you, Helper. He's, he's, I like him a lot. Smile. <laughs> Look, hyenas are both cats and dogs. You can't be mad. <laughs> true, true. But I like the, uh, I mean, this is a classic counterfeit coming out from Claywin players. It's just this stage offers so much, so many depths of recovery mix-ups. But if you're going to keep DI in down tilt, you'll eat these back airs every day of the week. Yeah, you have to be very mindful of, like, where you're going amidst the combos because Forzorn could just be positioned perfectly, even if you have a concept of where to maneuver yourself. And especially as Claren, like, you want to keep your boots on base platform so that you can consistently punish out any movement that's on the platforms, especially with Spirit Tree. I think the stage pick was very good, but Uda still needs to be very on top of how they're moving and how they're going to position themselves so they can get ready to play the game instead of just playing Cake's game. And right now, they're very much playing Cake's game. <laughs> yeah, that's all That's all Cake Assault, being able to find ways to close out stocks. Because, I mean, Forest Burn can have a little bit of trouble being a, largely a set-up character with both his extensions and his neutral. Being able to find anything to get into your kill moves and not just some uh, cleaner finishers, especially at high percent, that's going to be looking to be pretty strong. But the same thing has to be said for Uda. He needs to make the most out of this alleged situation, but Cake can make it so hard. I love how he took control of stage. He's letting Cake Assault do his offstage gimmicks, do his offstage play, and then try and keep stage control as much as possible. There is that down smash. Man. That there was you go. That was cloned the entire time? Oh my god. Cake, what? you're so good. What's the <laughs> patience from Uda, too? Knowing not to overextend on the off chance that they just swing into a clone. Like, waiting for your opportunity to actually sit there and fight Cake is something that you're forced to do. Force Burn naturally being able to just mix up how they're going to maneuver, and if it's the Force Burn that you want to fight, Uda rewarded for their smart decisions, manages to even out the stock count. Got a bit of percentage to work with here, but... Like, this is good play. This is looking like an excellent bounce back from what we saw in game one. Yeah, this is just feeding into what naturally makes the matchup very solid for uh, uh, for Clarin. Uda doing a good job of using that disjoint to negate many of these clones, forcing Cake Assault to get creative. And, I mean, Cake Assault has certainly been creative, but it's been playing around Uda a lot more in this game. But those punishes are still extreme as he looks for the down air on the DI in, yet still trying to keep this Clarin recovery mitigated as far as possible. That'll do it. Yeah, even with really good DI, there's just no coming back from that one. I think the pieces are there for Uda to really make a stand in this set, but it's it's still, it's Cake. And the way that Cake was playing that out, even seeing how Uda was adapting, like still managed to keep it a very fraught situation. Going back to Spirit Tree, I think it's a really good choice for Uda, but they need to figure out when to properly time out their act the punishes. There's a couple of times where like Uda was reserved on the buttons, saw Cake go for the parry, and then punished accordingly. But that little bit of hesitation needs to go even further. Otherwise, Cake's running away with this one. Yeah, he needs to, like, letting uh, Cake get away with so many of these rising dares and, more importantly, these landing dares on a character that, by and by, is built on anti-airing with that, things like F-tilt and up-tilt for all of these clean extensions. Like, that is... That's something you cannot let Cake get away with. This platform play has been nice thus far. Finding the check chase as well. Can he close out the stock? 
going, going, but not gone yet. And the, the cone was popped off stage, so he had no way to tell, especially given how Cake has mastered a movement with the clone, mimicking the AI. I mean, <laughs> Cake is one step closer to how 9000. <laughs> yeah, it's it's looking rough. Like, you've got a player who's like on one hand, like they are mindful enough to not just blindly strike. At, on the other hand, you have a play. Oh, I'll take those. We, I guess we take those. Yeah, no, definitely. This is to try to get into winner's side top eight. We definitely take those. We take those all over the place and mixed up by the clone. When you're in the middle of that smoke, it gets that much harder to play around it. But I like how Uda has really committed to a game plan. Whether or not it'll work will depend on his execution, but he knows what he needs to do. And this stage is an excellent foil for that. The movement to get there and space that down in. Perfectly timed, too. Of course, we're so sick. <laughs> God, and this is where Cake is starting to cash in on so many of these reads, so much of what he has already been punishing. He's now starting to punish harder. He's taken the level up because he smells blood in the water. Like, at this point, you just run with all the momentum you have and end this out before Uda has any time to find free stocks or potential, like, adaptations that can lead to them earning it themselves. It's no jump, but refreshes this jump. A massive buff that Forest Burn got, being able to refresh your jump in smoke, just adds so many layers to the mix-up and the timing changes, which could, not only Cake would do offstage, but on stage as well. And if you're changing those timings up for Clayron, who's trying to live by patience, Sometimes you end up dying by that same amount of patience and Uda losing out that to a 3-0. A well-played 3-0, but a 3-0 against the best player in the world. Yeah, I feel like the way that Uda was playing this out, were it against a any other Forest Burn, they might have been able to you know, take the game, potentially take the set, because it's clear that they have the, the know-how of what you need to survive in this matchup. And it's also clear that they had the patience to execute that game plan. There's just too many layers of mix that Cake is giving us. And he's had plenty of time to develop that mix for a good long while as Cake is our first player in top eight, rightfully keeping his number one seed. Yep.